hello guys and welcome back to the channel so now guys whenever they refer to aliko dangote as the richest man in nigeria i laugh privately to myself but then of course i am not the only person laughing uh, privately to himself at the thought of aliko dangote being the richest man in nigeria a lot of people who know full well that they control three four times the wealth of uh, aliko dangote but then of course the source of their wealth is a bit dubious they also laugh privately to themselves so that one of those type of people is of course our professor Mahmoud Yakubu the chairperson of the INEC uh, uh, electoral body as guys I bring you this exposed how INEC chairman professor Mahmoud Yakubu allegedly paid 3 billion naira to secure reappointment so of course a lot of you would have heard that uh this guy uh Mahmoud Yakubu has been reappointed uh, as the chairperson of the uh, INEC again because of course his uh, tenure had come to an end but then he has been reappointed of course for the run-up to 2023 haven't done what they needed him to do in uh, uh 2019 so again the headline exposed how INEC chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubu allegedly paid 3 billion naira to secure reappointment. So now let's first go through the details of what's happened here before we discuss it. Inside details of how chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, secured reappointment for a second term in office, have emerged. Yakubu, who was first appointed as head of the electoral umpire on October 21st, 2015 by President Mohamed Buhari, had his first tenure come to an end in October this year. But like many public officials favored by the power blocks in Aso Rock Villa, Nigeria's seat of power, he was immediately rewarded with another term of five years. However, findings by correspondents have revealed that securing a second tenure in office didn't come cheap for Professor Yakubu, as he had to part ways with huge sums of money to facilitate his reappointment. According to a top insider, Yakubu paid at least 3 billion naira in bribes to have his tenure as INEC chairman extended by another five years. He paid a princely sum of 2 billion naira to a group led by Senate President Ahmed Lawan and another 1 billion naira to another group. These huge funds were deployed and mobilized by a civil servant and director in INEC who is described as wealthy and in charge of a strategic department. The director was also aided by a contractor to the commission, Mohamed Sani Musa, who is presently a serving senator from Niger State, responsible for the printing of INEC ballot papers used for elections under a company, Activate Technologies, the source told correspondents. It was further gathered that the reappointment of Yakubu as INEC boss was further made possible with the deaths of President Buhari's former chief of staff, Abakare, and Alaji Isafantua, and the disappearance from public glare of Maman Daura, a key member of a trusted group of allies Buhari relies on before making important decisions. The absence of these men, it was gathered, created the perfect avenue for powerful government officials with vested interest to persuade the president into handing Yakubu a fresh term in office. According to the source, the return of Yakubu as INEC boss was part of a larger ongoing tussle amongst power brokers in the country to have the agency under their firm control ahead of the 2023 general election, which to a large extent will determine the faith of the ruling or progressive Congress. There are currently at least four power blocks within the APC all fighting to determine persons to occupy key positions in the agency ahead of 2023. One group is said to be headed by Senate President Lawan, another by the 
Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice Abubakar Malami, a thought by Deputy Senate President Ovio Omar Agege, whilst the fourth group comprises key individuals in Asso Rock alongside Tinubu's caucus. In the current struggle to take over INEC, the Asso Rock group took the lead very early to outsmart others when they forwarded the name of Mrs. Loretta Onoche as a national commissioner nominee to replace a South South candidate, Dr. Mustafa Leki, representing the zone whose tenure elapsed on November the 9th. Unfortunately, Mr. Leki is the INEC chairman candidate being sponsored by the deputy Senate President Omar Gege, hence he vehemently raised legitimate concerns about the credibility of Onoche, even though in actual fact he did that because of the implication of that choice for his own candidate, who is reputed to be the most corrupt national commissioner and a consultant to politicians. The Asso Rock group put Onoche forward even when a serving South South candidate was from the same senatorial zone in Delta State. In the haste to extinguish the deputy Senate president's candidates, they failed to conduct the required ongoing diligence in Delta State. In any event, the action of the Asso Rock group also took the Senate President's group by surprise when the letter containing the nomination of the INEC National Commissioner nominees, including Onoche, was sent to the Senate President and it was read on the floor of the Senate. The shock and awe tactics by the Asso Rock group pushed the Ahmed Lawan group a few hours later to respond by riding on public sentiments against the nomination, hence it was reported that the Senate caucus then wrote to the president requesting for another nominee to replace Onoche. This was done to enable the Lawan group to perfect their own ongoing compromised negotiation with Professor Yakubu, who was desperate to get a second term and was willing to meet any demands made on him to secure a second term. To preempt the AGF Malami group that had already penciled their own chairmanship candidate, who is also a professor from the North, the Lawan group moved quickly ahead of the Malami group to get the nod of President Buhari and immediately Professor Yakubo's reappointment was announced in the media, but no letter to the effect was read on the floor of the Senate. The procedural omission was to checkmate Malami's group that was also going to get an approval from the president. The tragedy of the presidency at the moment is that any group that gets to the president first gets endorsed. In fact, the recent strategy is to get your nominee from any appointment announced first in the media to commit the government and then get the president's signature on its letter. That was how the Ahmed Lawan group triumphed for now before the Senate proceeded on recess to deal with the 2021 budget. Omar Gige's group had been lobbying in the past few months to have Dr. Lechi from Edo State as chairman using his Muslim faith to campaign to those around the president. Ironically, those who position themselves for the interest of Bola Tinubu have not been able to make meaningful inroads to influence the choice of those to be appointed into the commission. As things stand, electoral integrity and the independence of INEC is gone and does not matter in the motivation of any of the contending groups and this portends a grave danger for democracy in Nigeria, the source disclosed. This development, according to findings by correspondents, has cast a shadow of doubt over the integrity and fairness of the 2023 general election under the APC-led federal administration in Nigeria. On November the 12th, Hope Democracy Party 
one of the parties earlier deregistered by INEC filed a suit at the Federal High Court to stop the Nigerian Senate from screening Professor Yakubu for a second term in office. A statement by Anwal Abdullahi for the national chairman of the party said that Yakubu's reappointment did not follow due process as a meeting of the Council of State did not deliberate upon it and approve it as demanded by the 1999 constitution. No date has been fixed for the hearing. However, Yakubu has stepped aside since November the 9th pending his confirmation by the Senate. Ahmed Mwazu is currently heading the electoral agency as acting chairman. So as I said, if they are talking about wealth within the Nigerian state, there is nobody that can beat his chest that is wealthier than uh, uh, Mahmoud Yakubu. Look at the stupendous amount of money that was gifted to this guy to announce the result that he announced uh, earlier last year, February uh, 2019. A staggering and a bewildering uh, result, of course, uh, with such bravity and impunity declaring that uh, Buhari will continue to uh, be the president of Nigeria against both the will of the people of Nigeria and against the will of well-wishers of the Nigerian state. So a foisting of a draconian uh, regime so effectively sold Nigeria for however much, but still now not satisfied. And I'm not now sure if it's just the money that this guy is after anymore, but if the atrocities that he committed in 2019 in Feb February are so glaring and alarming that he cannot afford to have somebody else come in to run through the books. Because of course, whoever comes after Mahmoud Jakubu, of course, will just be another corruption merchant. There's absolutely, I don't think anybody will uh, argue that too much. But the level of corruption that took place in uh, February uh, 2019 is so alarming and staggering and the sums of monies that were, you recall that around about that period, the Buhari regime took $1 billion. We're talking about $1 billion. So they took uh, uh, $1 billion uh, out of the Nigerian uh, economy out of the Nigerian uh, bank account to say that they are using it to buy uh, military gears for the army uh, uh, for the Boko Haram thing. So it was very convenient then that in a few weeks towards the uh, uh, the, the general election where you don't even know that you're going to uh, return to power unless of course you know that you will return to power they took one billion without going through a uh, due process by the way because they needed to have referred to the senate then before they were able to take that money out of the nigerian coffers but they took it anyway by presidential fiat uh, because of course if they had gone to senate uh saraki would have just dismissed them out of hand and because he would have known of course that they were taking the money to prosecute or to yes to prosecute that uh, election so they took that out and that is in addition to the there are several other billions that they would have uh, ferreted away, and I'm talking dollars by the way, we're not talking Naira, that they would have ferreted away for that election, and all of that money, of course, at, at least a good percentage of it, some will go towards the sham of uh, having some sort of a campaign or whatever, but the bulk of the money will go towards the decision making on the declaration of a presidency, and that decision making, of course, is vested upon uh, Mahmoud Yakubu. So Mahmoud Yakubu, of course, would then need to shut so many mouths so that they can make the announcement without any force. So you can see now the vast sum of monies that would have transacted and transited, uh, especially in that February uh, 2019. So the imagination of uh, Aliko Dangote, I don't think even Aliko Dangote anyway imagines himself to be the richest Nigerian. They call it a uh, um, circle jerking is what they call it in our parlance. Uh, you scratch my back, I scratch your back. So the circle has formed again and the member has been readmitted, having just uh, uh, run his uh, term to full. And of course, he's been reappointed again to carry on the party and the looting. And of course, now they also need... Uh, 
uh, Mahmoud Yakubu in there for 2023 because already he's been compromised and they already know that he has a price. So it's that price now that has to be met again in 2023. So in 2023, of course, uh, Mahmoud Yakubu is now for the highest bidder because uh, his loyalty to Buhari no longer applies because uh, Buhari, of course, brought him in as chairman of INEC. So he might well have felt some loyalty to him for that but buhari is not going to be on the ballot in 2023 so uh, mahmoud yakubu then has no loyalty to anybody so he has two choices now he either tries to redeem himself by running some sort of a credible election in nigeria that will never happen because that has never happened in the history of the country we've only had one instance that nigeria had a credible election that was in uh, the abiola june 12 thing and that was uh, swiftly cancelled because they cannot have have the people having their way in Nigeria so he has that option of running uh, the second uh, free election that shows the will of the people in Nigeria or he also has the uh, option of a double your money from uh, 20 uh, 2019 from 2019 so he has a double double my money option or the option to uh run a credible election so which option do you think he's going to take of those two is really my question and i'd like the answers to that in the comment section but before you come into the comment section to give those answers click on the red subscribe button so it turns gray the bell button notifies you every time i drop a new video click on like as well because that helps with the youtube algorithm once you've done all the clickings the machinations and the machiavelli maneuvering that uh, has evolved as the reappointment of uh, Mahmoud Yakubu as the chairman of INEC is what is up for discussion. So I'll leave you here. Carry this conversation on with you in the comment section. But here I say peace.